How do you show value by making it about the other person? How do you, how do you show up for them rather than what they can do for you? Welcome to Inspiration Rising. My name is David Trotter and I'm a business growth consultant. I'm passionate about helping business owners just like you rise above your biggest barriers to reach your greatest goals, all without the paralyzing overwhelm, feeling all alone, or wondering what the heck to do next. I'm a former pastor and a serial entrepreneur who's passionate about personal growth because that's what's helped me cultivate peace in my life and empowered me to love my amazing wife, Laura, of 26 years and our two almost grown kids. So if you're all about business, personal growth, and peace in your life, you're in the right place. I'm super glad that you're here. Hello, friend. Welcome back to Inspiration Rising. It is great to have you with me today. Hey, if you are starting your own business or already have one, and you are feeling the pressure of needing to develop, create, generate a ginormous following in order to grow your business, I want to introduce you to Ellen Yen today. She's the founder of Cubicle to CEO, and she helps entrepreneurs sell their one-on-one services to make their first $10,000 a month without a large audience or even posting every day. Now, that's a tall order because most people, I would assume, I would assume you think, hey, you've got to have a large audience and you've got to be posting even multiple times a day on social media in order to grow that audience. And she has developed a system where she's worked with over 7,000 entrepreneurs and brands ranging from startups to Fortune 500 companies. And now she's got this award-winning Cubicle to CEO podcast and membership program to help people develop their first $10,000 a month. So I am really excited for you to be able to meet Ellen. We had a little bit of audio challenges back and forth on this. So if you hear a little blip, blip, or miss a couple of a sentence here and there, I apologize. We did the best that we could, but I really believe that this is going to be a worthwhile episode for you to be able to listen to. Now, also, if you are not subscribed to Inspiration Rising, hey, open up your favorite podcast app and click subscribe so that you can make sure that you get every single episode. And if you happen to be subscribed on the Apple Podcast app, that is the place to leave a review. I love seeing reviews from friends who are listening to the podcast and how it's inspiring you and motivating you to take your next step in life and business. So let's jump into this conversation with Ellen Yen. Well, Ellen, thank you so much for taking time to hang with me today. I appreciate it. David, thank you so much for having me. Ellen, I want to know a little bit more about your backstory. You've got quite a a platform now helping people, whether it's coaches, consultants, service providers, really start and get their business going. Um, How did you find your way into the online business space? Sure. So my story, David, is really that of an accidental entrepreneur. And maybe some of you can relate. I quit my corporate marketing job at the end of 2017. I was 23. I didn't have a backup plan and I really had no intention of starting a business. But during that month afterwards, when I was searching for a job, I actually ended up reconnecting with a colleague of mine at the company I had left and him and his wife actually owned a local business outside of, you know, the, the company that we were working at. And it was these two local coffee stands and they had heard that I knew a thing or two about Instagram marketing. And so they asked if I'd be willing to help them launch their social media marketing channels. And so I thought it sounded like a really fun project. I got to utilize the skill set that I already had. And so why not? I, I did it. And it was a $300 project, nothing life-changing by any means, but it was life-changing in the, in the fact that it, it, I think opened up this whole new possibility for me that I hadn't considered before, mm-hmm. which is monetizing uh, a skill that I already knew and had experience in. And I realized, Hey, if I can successfully, you know, acquire this client for, for however much that I can go out there and, and do it again and again, and continue to acquire bigger accounts. And so you did that over the course of what, a, a couple of years, you grew that business significantly. Yeah. So within our first 12 months, um, we actually 
surpassed uh, six figures in, in client services. And then we continued growing that business organically for two years to multi six figures. Um, but some, at some point in late 2019, early 2020, I actually decided to make a pivot into online courses because I realized that with the agency, um, the only way I could scale and work with more clients was to hire significantly more team members. And although I, I do have a team these days of, you know, full-time employees at that moment in time, in that season of my life, I wasn't quite ready for, for that. And I, and I felt like I could impact a lot more people through programs. And more importantly, I feel like that pivot came about very organically because, um, as I was growing my service-based business, I was sharing my journey online. And a lot of people were starting to ask me questions like, you know, how do, how do I grow my audience or how do I uh, get clients? How do you know what to charge? How do you do sales? All these more, uh, you know, behind the scenes questions, it really sparked this interest in me. And this, and I saw this need for a solution for these people who were basically, you know, a past version of me two, three years ago. Um, and especially for solo service providers who didn't have a team, didn't have a large budget, didn't have a large following or audience, I wanted to create a solution that would work for them. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you just quit your job and we, we kind of glossed over this. That's not <laughs> thing. you know, I'm assuming, were you living at home at the time? Did you have that safety net where you didn't have bills and like, were your parents like excited? Like, yes, you went to college. And you quit your job. Thank you so much. Like, what what are they thinking? So, in in short, David, no, my my parents were not um, <laughs> not excited about me quitting my job without a backup plan. Um, however, you know, they never imposed their will. They never said you can't do this. Right? It was just they were cautious, and I understand why because I think we all have a different tolerance for risk, and also, you know, at at the time, I I, I was very, I think lucky to be in the position that I was in because in college I had worked multiple jobs, um, while I was going to school full time and through working all through college, as well as scholarships, um, I was able to graduate university debt-free, which was a huge blessing. And it gave me more, I think, space, um, in my postgraduate life to make some decisions early on. And so, um, at the time when I quit my job, after college, um, I lived out in college and then I moved back in with my parents temporarily to save some money while I started my, uh, you know, corporate job. And so that did give me also an additional, I think, safety net to be able to, um, make that leap eventually. What if you could prepare your heart for the week ahead in just 30 minutes? That's exactly what I want to help you do every Sunday at Solarize. If you're a soul-inspired coach, leader, or entrepreneur of any kind, it is absolutely critical for you to show up full of life and energy for your clients and customers every week. They need you. But the truth is that you can't pour from an empty cup. That's why I want to invite you to join me on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific time for Solarize. It's a 30-minute experience to help you prepare your heart for the week ahead. RSVP at soularise.me. That's soularise.me. All right, I'll see you on Sunday. It is the best time for, you know, I truly believe for people that are coming out of college, the best time to be entrepreneurial is right out of college. It, unless you've got a huge debt, which you've got to, then you've got to deal with that. But I don't know. I, I You had such a safety net there. Help me understand your ability to generate six figures in six months. Um, this is very unusual, especially, you know, you know, not to uh, put down people of different ages. I just know a, at 23, 24, that's a significant growth of a business in an area where you did not have previous experience. Or do you have this magical gift of making money or was it something else? <laughs> Right. So the, the six figures in six months, uh, case study that you're referring to David was 
this, um, this case study that I compiled over a period of six months in 2019, where I released uh, monthly income reports stating exactly how much I had earned, what I spent, what I profited. Um, and that was in 2019. So my first year in business was actually 2018. And in 2018, I, I uh, was able to scale to six figures within my first 12 months in business, but it wasn't quite six months. Gotcha. Um, however, to answer your question, I think, um, and I still believe it to this day, um, you know, our business has since generated over $1 million, but from the beginning and still now, I think that um, the greatest asset you can invest in, in your business by far is your network, your relationships with other people, the connections that you make. And I think I understood that very early on. And so um, although I do feel like I have a natural knack for selling and these are you know strategies that I fine-tuned over the years and have now you know built into systems in my program that I teach other people, I do think that um, placing a priority on really putting myself out there and creating relationships with people really helped open doors for certain client introductions or referrals. Um, that really helped move that needle forward early on when I didn't have a lot else because I didn't have years of experience or a large ad, or I shouldn't even say large or any ad budget. I didn't run ads at all for the first two years of my business. And I, in fact, I didn't even have a website either. Um, when I reached my first six figures in that business, I still didn't have a website. So it was all very scrappy, but relationship and connection focused from the get go. Now, because of the magic of editing, listeners, you are not hearing that Ellen and I have had some massive connection issues on this mm -hmm. podcast. And Ellen, you are just cool as a cucumber. I mean, you just keep rolling with it. You, you Are you just like always this chill? What's going <laughs> on here? Oh, my goodness. Um, David, I'm going to throw in a pop culture reference that... You okay? Honestly, you guys either love or hate the Kardashians, right? We all we all fall on one side of the coin. I'm keeping I up. I'm keeping up. I watched yeah. the last season. <laughs> I happen to love them. I think a trashy reality TV is kind of a, a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, but anyways, uh, it made me laugh when you said that, David, because you know, in in one of I think it was actually the series finale, Kim Kardashian said, "Calmness is my superpower," and I don't think that's always true of myself. But when it comes to relationship building or speaking, I, I do feel like calmness is a superpower that I have. So thank you, David, for being so unfailingly kind and patient with these internet issues as we all experience, you know, in, in the age of COVID. You are just super calm. I'm very impressed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know I've mentioned it before because of the, you know, you coming out of college, but you are how many people tell you you're so young? I mean, Ellen, you're so young and you're just like crushing it. You're just doing it. Great job. I'm just, I'm loving this. You're doing great things. So good. Thank you so much, David. That means a lot. You know, it's interesting. Um, my age doesn't come up that often simply because I think I've always acted older than I am. Like, I, I feel mm -hmm. like I was born a grandma. Like when I was like 10, I feel like I was already 40. So only um, child. <laughs> what'd you say? Are you an only child? I am not. I actually have two younger sisters. Uh, they're identical twins. Okay. Um, so no, not an only child, but, um, I am the oldest. And so that maybe has something to do with it. And Anyways, yeah, people always assume I'm older than I am. So I think maybe more so they're surprised retroactively when I tell them my age. Um, but thank you. I appreciate I appreciate your support. Well, I don't know if that was support, Ellen. It was just more astoundment, uh, being astounded. <laughs> yes, it is support. It's support. Okay, so now you are are helping people, helping coaches, consultants, service providers get themselves to that first 10K month through one-on-one -on -one client services, how do they do that when they don't necessarily have a big following or a big marketing budget, just like you didn't have? Absolutely. So um, like I mentioned, connections are really going to be the difference in That's your business early on. Yep. And whether that means offline or online, 
you need to put yourself out there to actually make connections. And here's the key mistake, David, that I think a lot of people make early on in their business is oftentimes people fall into the trap of what I call the content hamster wheel, which is, you know, almost every popular podcast, blog, guru out there is like, you need to post every single day. You need to create consistent content in order for your business to be successful. And while I do believe absolutely that there is power in consistency and that consistency does unlock so much momentum, sometimes I think consistency can be applied to the wrong idea. Okay. Meaning- I'm going to, yeah. I'm, I'm going to interrupt you here. You're, yeah, you're, you're getting, no, this is good. This is really good. So, uh, you're saying being consistent in the wrong area. So you're saying consistent in reaching out. How do, how do I do that? How do I do that? Especially if I'm like maybe even slightly introverted, like, how do I do this, Ellen? Great question. So the key to being the most interesting person in any room online or off David is to be interested. In the other person. Mm, yeah, so cool. I mean, and that's not my quote, right? I, I don't know who said that. I think it was like one of the Roosevelts. They said, You you become interesting by first being interested. It and was I really, Kim Kardashian. What would you say? It's Kim, Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, I I live by that rule because I really think that um if you're an introverted person and you feel you don't have a lot to offer, that is okay. What people truly crave most of the time in connection is someone to listen. And mm-hmm. so I feel like if you can show up and be curious, if you can ask a lot of questions, if you can make it about the other person and less wow. about yourself, you are going to be amazed by the, the deep connections that you're able to make um, very quickly. And I think online, especially like if you're using social media, again, don't get me wrong. Content is massively important, but to post every day, just for the sake of checking something off your marketing to-do list and, and to feel like, you know, if I, if I post something today on Facebook or on Instagram, I've somehow accomplished something. I, I think that's the wrong mentality because really if you post a million times a day, but you have a tiny audience and no one's seeing your content, does it really create any traction in your business? It's like that, you know, old adage, like if a tree falls in the forest, but no one hears it, what really happened there? So I, I think it's kind of the same concept where, um, instead of focusing so intently on trying to be everywhere on every platform and post every day, just for the sake of it, I would instead redirect your energy to thinking about, okay, if I'm starting out and I have a small audience and not a lot of people are here to see my content, cool. That's a fact, but you you really want to think about how, how can I find out where my ideal client already hangs out and find those existing traffic sources and get in front of those traffic sources so that instead of taking the slow route, which is to wait years and build up your own audience first and then sell, you can sell simultaneously while getting in front of your ideal clients in places where they already exist. Because the truth is you don't have to you don't have to form your ideal clients out of thin air, right? They already exist. They exist somewhere. So you just have to find where they already hang out and where they've already been conveniently congregated for you and then step in front of those traffic sources. So let's talk about some of those places that they're hanging out. Podcasts are a very easy way to get in front of people. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What else? Uh, well, my favorite, my favorite platform is Instagram and if you just think about what brands, what key influencers, what accounts are my ideal clients already following, you already have thousands and thousands of potential groups of people that are pre, pre-congregated for you, right? That you can then just go and start connecting with, start reaching out to start. And when I say reaching out, I do not mean cold pitch. Please do not be that person who pops in someone's private messages. And the first thing out of your mouth is, Hey, I do so-and-so service. I thought you might be a good fit. Let's see if we can work together. Nobody likes to be on the receiving end of that. So really, again, it's the same golden rule that you would take into an in-person room. If you were networking, it's the same idea online. How do you show value by making it about the other person? How do you, how do you show up for them rather than what they can do for you? And if you're always 
you know, again, being curious, if you have your detective hat on and you're always looking for a way to get to know someone else better, that is when you actually find the opportunities for you to offer your help or your service as a solution when it actually makes sense to. And so on Instagram, this looks like, I assume, following the person, if they're not a private account, liking their content, commenting appropriately. Is this what this looks like? Yeah. I mean, engaging in whatever way feels authentic to you. And David, that could be different for a lot of people. You know, some people love to engage in stories, um, watching other people's stories, replying to other people's stories. Some people Mm. love, you know, consuming people's written content. You don't, honestly, you don't even necessarily have to follow someone in order for a relationship to form. It's interesting because in this world of vanity metrics, we place so much emphasis on followers, right? Both who Mm -hmm. we're following and who follows us. But in my experience, some of the best conversations and relationships and even friendships that have formed um, from connecting online, there's times, honestly, where like, I'll I'll have been friends with someone for like two years and we've honestly kept up a conversation for that long. And I'll look back and we kind of both realize, oh, we're not even following each other. And it it wasn't even something that crossed our mind because it is the least important thing, I think, of of all the other things that you could be focusing your energy on. Mm -hmm. But you're not seeing their content if you're not following them though, correct? I mean, it depends on you know, how, how you engage, because for, for me, most of my connection happens in the DMS. And so I'm not necessarily having to see something in the newsfeed for us to have a conversation. So I guess it depends on the way you interact and what your, um, initial, I guess, trigger point is, but you know, there's other systems out there. Um, for example, like for me, I I try to keep my newsfeed as decluttered as possible because it already is a little overwhelming. And so, for me, like if I have uh, relationships that I'm building that I want to follow up on, I'll have my own separate um, like CRM, you know, client relationship management system that I have set up somewhere else where I can keep track of like who I'm talking to. Mm-hmm. And for the average coach, consultant, service provider that you're coaching, that's part of your cubicle to CEO program, mm-hmm. how many conversations would you anticipate that they're having in Instagram DMs? I tell them that if you can aim for um, every week, whatever the breakdown looks like for you, if you can aim for, let me think, about 150 new connections started. And I'm not saying 150 ongoing conversations 24 seven, right. That would be insane. But I just mean that if you can have a touch point, a new touch point with 150 different people in your actual audience each week, the amount of traffic that you're able to organically generate is going to make a huge difference so that your content actually does get seen. And more importantly, that the right people will reveal themselves to you. Meaning if you go into every single conversation thinking, if I have one contact point with this person, they are going to be a lead or they are going to be a client. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very mistaken way to approach relationship building because you're entering with a mindset of having an agenda and that almost never works. You need to, I keep saying this, but it's so true. You really need to adopt a mentality of someone who is curious and who is a detective, meaning that sometimes you're going to have a connection or have, you know, contact with someone where two, uh, you know, two seconds in, you're going to realize, you know, this person is someone who will never benefit. Like they have no need for what I offer the service or solution. And that's okay because not everyone is supposed to be your ideal client and whether or not you choose to, you know, continue that relationship for other reasons, for friendship, for support, for collaboration, referrals, whatever it is, that's, you know, that's totally up to you. But I think it's just the most important thing is to not have an agenda and not try to force someone into your preconceived notion of who they are and what they need from you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're ready to start your online business and share your expertise with the world as a life coach, health coach, healer, practitioner, whatever soul inspired entrepreneur you are wanting to be. But how the heck do you turn that dream into an actual business? Well, that's exactly why we're launching Rise Up Business Academy. 
I want to help you rise above the overwhelm and procrastination to start your online business, stand out from the crowd, and work with your dream clients, all while fulfilling your divine purpose and generating financial freedom. Founding members get access to our signature Launchpad course, weekly live training via Zoom, and as a bonus, you get a membership to Rise Up Creatives, our content development platform. I want to invite you to join now as a founding member at the lowest price we will ever offer membership. Check it out now at riseupbusinessacademy.com. That's riseupbusinessacademy.com. And so I am. Uh, somehow I'm connecting with them. I find them on through Instagram stories or through a feed or through them commenting on a, something that I know that would potentially indicate that they are a dream client, ideal client. I start, I DM them. I say, Hey, what's going on? I love your blah, blah, blah. I have a question, you know, whatever the question is, what's the process you're hoping they're going to respond They're You're, you're thinking, this person's not creepy. Like you're hoping for that. Like uh, help me out here. I think the purpose of social media, the reason we even post anything content is because we hope people engage with us, right? Mm -hmm. Like nobody, nobody creates content all day long, hoping to get zero reaction, zero feedback. And so when you actually genuinely engage in someone's content and it does have to be genuine, right? So like if, If someone posts about, I don't know, I'm just making this up. Let's say, let's say someone's posting they're at a basketball game and you hate sports, please do not respond and be like, oh, wow. Like I love basketball. Like this is amazing. What's your favorite team, right? That, that would not be a great sustainable approach to building your business. However, when you find a common connection point and you actually truly again, show up curious and ask relevant questions based on the content they're posting, it opens up this door for you to actually have real conversations with people. And so I think the most important thing is to actually talk about what they're interested in, not to talk about yourself, not to show up saying, Hey, I'm so-and-so I do so-and-so what about you? Because even that is still making it about yourself. Let's first engage in their content and make sure they feel seen and supported. Mm -hmm. At what I assume you're using some sort of external software in order to manage all of these hundreds and hundreds of conversations. Is that correct? I actually don't. Nope. I everything I do is natively within the Instagram app. I don't believe in using bots or software or anything like that because mm-hmm. um if like in terms of if if you have like I do have a leads tracking system that I teach in my program for how to, you know, keep track of different conversations you're having, but we do not use any sort of software that, you know, sends out, um, automated copy paste messages or that we answer DMS through a different platform. We don't, you're doing it all natively. Yeah. Yep. It's all native. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, um, how many hours a day would you say your average student is spending on developing these connections? So our system that we teach and the system that we teach in the program, I actually break down the system in my free masterclass, which David, I'm sure um, we can share a link at the end of this conversation. Uh, But the system is designed to work in less than 30 minutes a day. So most of our students are saving hours and hours of time each week that they used to spend on marketing because they had no strategic plan. They just we're stressed and overwhelmed trying to come up with new content every day. We actually pair evergreen content with consistent traffic generators. And we have a very specific lead generator and sales generator that we move, um, you know, potential clients through the, uh, through the system for, and all of that should ideally only take you 20 to 30 minutes a day. And so that is my goal with all of the students is that, unless you are yourself a marketing expert and that is your service, most business owners do not go into business because they want to become marketing experts. I mean, they want, they want to spend their time actually serving their clients, doing what they love and what they're good at. And so to help people stay in their zone of genius, I really wanted to create a system that would work for people with limited time so that you can actually cut down your marketing hours. And with our system, you should really only be spending two to three hours a week maximum on marketing. 
Mm. The uh, free workshop um, that you talked about is the free training is called how to make your first 10,000 month with one-on-one client services, even if you have a tiny following Mm -hmm. and people can get that at lnyen.com slash get clients. So we'll definitely have that in the show notes. Um, I also want to draw attention to your podcast, Cubicle to CEO. Tell us about that. Who should listen and what will they learn? Thanks, David. I really appreciate that. So Cubicle to CEO is my podcast where we we tend to shine um, the spotlight on female founders. I actually started this podcast as a passion project because before I ever got into the world of entrepreneurship, I... Um, went to college originally, uh, to, to be a broadcast journalism major. And I always thought my career someday would be interviewing people for a living. So I guess that came true just in a different capacity than I thought. (laughs) And so, um, my podcast, I, I created it as a platform to really highlight female voices and especially women of color, um, who have less opportunities in the media to, you know, have their stories be elevated and shared. And so, Most weeks, it's an interview with a female founder um, sharing their story of success. And I love bringing on a diverse set of experts and CEOs in different industries and businesses to really um, provide a broad range of skills and strategies that people can apply to their own businesses. And so, for example, like the past two weeks, we did a mini series um, interviewing two authors, one who got a six figure book deal through a traditional publisher, and then one who self published and landed on bestsellers list. So we'll do different, you know, topical things. Sometimes we'll do a whole series on podcasting or, um, something deep diving into different, uh, strategies of marketing, whether it's paid or organic. So, um, it's really a, a mixture of story and tactical strategies and who should listen. I think. I think if you want to grow your business and you want to be inspired by other people who have done it before you and have set that possibility and you like numbers and real life case studies and tactical tips, then this would be a great show for you. Awesome. Ellen, uh, thank you so much for remaining cool as a cucumber through all these technical issues. I appreciate you sharing your wisdom. And of course, we'll drive people to ellenyen.com slash get clients. You guys could... Uh, should check out all the free training that she has there. So thank you, Ellen. David, thank you so much for your uh, being so flexible as well. And I really, really love this conversation. Great questions. Hey, congrats on listening to another episode of Inspiration Rising. Why congrats? Because you're pouring education and inspiration into your mind and heart. And that's something we all need if we're going to grow our businesses and reach our goals in life. Now, if you enjoy Inspiration Rising, do us a favor, share it with a friend, take a screenshot of your favorite episode and text it to them. Tell them to search for Inspiration Rising on their favorite podcast app and click subscribe. I want you to know today that you're inspired, empowered, and loved. Not because of the way you feel or what anyone else says about you, but because that's your true identity. 